So welcome uh, everybody to um, Glasgow Archaeology Seminar. Uh, today we are hosting Dr. Jafar Jotari, um, who is an assistant professor at the Department of Archaeology of the University of Al Qadisia in Iraq. Um, Jafar's background is in geology and in geoarchaeology. Um, he has an undergraduate degree from the University of Mosul, then did a master's in Baghdad, and finally a PhD awarded in 2016 um, at uh, Durham. Um, he's currently a co-I on UCL's Nahri Network um, and a PI on several heritage projects in Iraq. Uh, Jafar's academic uh, and fieldwork, uh, interest in fieldwork are focused on uh, Mesopotamia's waterways or waterscapes, I really like that in one of your publication titles. Um, and today Jafar is going to talk about the results of a new archaeological survey that he's carrying out in the western part of Uruk. So please over to you Jafar. Uh, thank you, Claudia, for this introduction. Uh, I'm really delighted uh, to be guest in your seminar. I will switch, switch off the camera uh, for uh, to, to have a good connection. Uh, yeah, so this work is part of uh, a master thesis, actually, uh, done in Al Qadisiya University. Uh, my student name is Abdul Amir Al Jabri. Uh, and me and Abdul Amir Al Hamdani uh, was uh, both supervised this uh, situation. So I uh, I lead I took the lead in the fieldwork survey, the office work, and the uh, uh, fieldwork survey, while Dr. Hamdani took uh, the lead in poetry interpretation. Uh, I also must uh, thank uh, Mark. Uh, al Tawil for being the external examiner of uh, my students uh, on this uh, topic. Uh, so the uh, results of a new archaeological survey uh, to the western part of Uruk, I think everyone knows where uh, Uruk is located. Sorry. Uh, Uruk, uh, you know, it's uh, a capital, it's a large city, uh, Sumerian and then Babylonian, uh, located uh, in the middle of uh, the southern Mesopotamia, flood plain. Uh, to the west of the flood plain where the Euphrates River, the ancient Euphrates River, is dominating the area. Uh, however, uh, I would argue that Uruk region was receiving water from the Tigris uh, River too. Anyway, this is another uh, issue. So before uh, this study, I did several research about Uruk. Uh, I did uh, mention Uruk in my PhD thesis. And I also uh, published a paper with uh, other colleagues about the Holocene fluvial and uh, anthropogenic process. In the region of Uru. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. We've had a request from the um, audience. Um, if you could put uh, your um, presentation on full screen so that they can see the details better, please. I see. Yeah, I will make it larger. Thank you. Yeah, how about that? Uh, no, because I'm using PDF rather than the, the PowerPoint. Should I use the PowerPoint? I will try. We could try if that's yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. Uh. Yeah, how about now? Great. 
Yeah. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I was saying I was saying that uh, I'm really familiar with the area. I did uh, visit the area and did some research there during my PhD, another paper, and you know this work with my student. Uh, and I'm also you know, Rook is not far away from Diwania where uh, my university there. So from time to time, I go there with my students for TV trips and so on. So I'm really familiar with the, with the area. So that's why uh, we selected the area. Um, the other reason actually behind selecting uh, this area is that the area was not surveyed by adults or any other local or international teams at all. So you see the, the red lines there, it is unsurveyed area by Adam, you know, by Adams, you know, you know, uh, you know, around uh, uh, Ur, um, they did survey. Uh, in Uruk also lots of survey, survey there, but to the west part, west part of Uruk, there is no uh, a survey. So it is a gap in, uh, in the Mesopotamian for the blend. Uh, the SBIH did not uh, do any survey. Uh, the international team, the local team, nobody did survey at all. Yes, they did uh, some survey in remote sensing, but there, there was no any field work. So that's why uh, uh, we in Al Qadisiyah decided to select the area to do uh, the intensive. Uh, field work that I will show you uh, the result. So this is the area. You know, I will talk about the western part and the eastern part. So I mean by the uh, eastern part, the area that around Uru, and the western part, you know, uh, western part, uh, the area uh, that's surrounded by a red line. Uh, this is the western part, and this is the eastern part. The eastern part, you know, uh, faced lots of survey, modern or ancient survey by Adams, by other uh, colleagues. But the Western part, uh, you know, there, is, there was no any uh, survey. Uh, so my job actually was uh, first identifying the uh, archaeological sites and ancient rivers using remote sensing. A technique. Um, in my PhD thesis and other my uh, publications, I used uh, the same method, which is using satellite image uh, to uh, identify sites and uh, archaeological uh, site. I mean, and an ancient uh, river. Uh, I also published a paper about recognizing of ancient uh, uh, channel and archaeological site in the Mesopotamian Hedeblian using satellite image and digital topography. So we followed this uh, method. Uh, this, this, this method contains, uh, you know, dealing with sort of uh, uh, satellite image, high resolution satellite image, such as digital globe, uh, corona uh, satellite image, uh, SRTM, and other topographical maps, geological map, historical maps. And then we put all the data, of course, using uh, GIS. By following this method, I think we will not miss any site or any ancient uh, river. So I think it's 100% uh, uh, complete uh, work. But this is using a uh, remote sensing technique. That should follow by uh, uh, field work. And I also did a field work with my student. Uh, in satellite image, for example, we use uh, some uh, visual element to identify the landscape archaeology. One of them is the relative height. So relative height is one of the important visual elements that can be used to identify archaeological site. 90% actually 
of the site were relatively higher than the surrounding area. We do have sites that not elevated than the surrounding area, but 90% of the sites in the southern Mesopotamia are uh, highly elevated than the surrounding area. That's why we used SRTM to pick up uh, the archaeological uh, mount. And the other uh, uh, visual element is a tone. So the tone is also one of the important visual elements that can be used to identify archaeological sites and rivers. Most of the sites actually are darker in color because of the salinity and capillary uh, action. So you see this is uh, a site. And you, you can recognize the tone between the, the site uh, body, let's say, and uh, the surrounding area. So it is darker. So it's darker in the field and also in the, uh, in the satellite image. Um, you see in this uh, satellite image, maybe in the same color or the, uh, or the, this image, but you can see the tone. Uh, for example, this area is, uh, the same color, yet the side has a different tone. So uh, for me, I can recognize the, the side here, its boundary, you know, uh, I can see um, its foundation, but here there is no side, you see? So tone is really important uh, element. The texture is also one of the important visual elements. Uh, and uh, always I use it to identify a site or uh, ancient river. So uh, I mean with texture is repeating some set of tone will lead to form a texture. So for example, in this uh, photo, ridges and swell, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, ridges and swell actually is the is a key to uh, recognize the, the texture of ancient river or uh, sites. Uh, so you can see clearly the uh, ridges and the swell in this uh, uh, photo. So yeah, yeah. So you see, I mean, the texture is really important uh, for me to identify the ancient river and uh, satellite image. You know, you have a wide area, uh, and if you, uh, you should have some key visual element to identify uh, uh, sites or ancient rivers. So texture is one of them. Um, yeah. You can see yeah, the shape is also uh, one of the important visual elements that can be used to identify sites and uh, uh, river like, as well. So some, some sites can show buildings uh, foundation as you can see uh, that one. The other key element is uh, a situation. You know, uh, if we have a site, then uh, some feature uh, sometimes associated with the site, such as uh, looting uh, bits. Um, so looting bits actually is one of the, uh, let's say, key feature. So whenever we have, let's say, uh, looting hole, then we can suggest this, okay, this is might be a site, as you can see in this uh, satellite image. So lots of uh, looting bits in this uh, uh, photo, so I can actually easily uh, draw the 
the site and identify the site. So see how many looting spit in, in this site. Of course, people do not dig holes without reason. You know, it's a desert. So people, the local people uh, know where is the site and then try to dig uh, holes for looting. And then maybe they, they can help us to identify uh, the site. Uh, the other uh, uh, key element is with the situation actually is existing uh, shrine on top of the site. It is co so common in Iraq to find shrine where uh, built over a mound for a religious uh, reason. So we can identify shrine on satellite image or in the field world. So we can use shrine as a key indication to identify uh, sites. So when I finished the office work, which is remote sensing work, identify using satellite image to identify uh, a site and ancient river, I ended up finding or identifying more than 120 sites, but not all of them are sites. So I need to go to the field to see to each identified site to see whether it's site or not. So when I when I went to the field work from the 120, 120 sites, uh, only 91 sites were actually sites, uh, and I named them, I named them from AJ one to AJ91. Uh, so if, if someone asks why AJ is, you know, Abdel Amir and Jodhari. So Abdel Amir and Jodhari one and Abdel Amir and Jodhari 91. So the, all of these actually these sites are new sites, have not been registered in the SBAH or anywhere, any, anyone, uh, any other, uh, I mean, sort of uh, registration. So all of these sites were just in the uh, thesis and we wrote a report to the SBAH uh, and we gave them uh, details, details about uh, uh, these sites. So we added up to the, I mean, we contributed as the University of Akadisiya, we contributed to the, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to at the, at the SBAH, uh, to the archaeology and research of Iraq by adding a new uh, 81 uh, sites, 91 sites, I mean. Um, so after finishing the uh, uh, office work or remote sensing uh, work, we, won we went to the field and of course we found uh, the sites. We collected uh, uh, lots of um, surface findings, I mean. Botary, for example, um, door socket, uh, rocks, any other type of uh, tools. So each side, we collected uh, several you know, surface findings, Dep depends on the shape, the size of the uh, surface uh, finding, and we, we put it on a bag, and then we mark it, and then we send it to the SBAH in in, in Warka or in Al Muthanna, and then of course we did some uh, you know sorting and cleaning uh, to them. You know, lots of bricks there, another type of bricks. You know, we found lots of looting holes. And then of course we uh, we cleaned the, the pottery and sorted out the pottery according to the period of occupation. This part was done by my student and of course help with uh, help from Abdelmir uh, Hamdani. Yeah, another example of the pottery from there. You see 
different types of uh, pottery from different uh, period of occupation. So you see, I mean, uh, the, the result of cleaning and uh, sorting the pottery have shown us that the area faced a continuous occupation started from the early dynastic period until the early Islamic period. So we have more than 4,000 years of continuous occupation in this area. This is according to the uh, pottery, you know, pottery type of pottery, uh, uh, you know, size or pottery classification. So in the coming slide, the coming slides, I will show you several examples of the sites to see how these sites are looking like. They are different in shape, size, elevation, you know, top uh, surface feature, but all of them actually were located on one single ancient river. For example, this uh, site contained uh, Old Babylonian, Middle Babylonian, and New Babylonian uh, pottery. This site uh, has Old Babylonian and Middle Babylonian uh, occupation. And you can see the shape uh, of the site, the size, you know. This site has uh, Old Babylonian and Middle Babylonian uh, occupation. This site has also Old Babylonian and Middle Babylonian uh, occupation. This site has a Middle Babylonian occupation. You see the size of the. Uh, uh, this site has a Parthian uh, uh, occupation. You know, it's in 91 uh, uh, sites. So this is just an example of each site, different in shape, size, period of occupation. That one has a Middle Babylonian and Seleucid. And of course, each site has, uh, or close to the ancient river. I never found any site away from ancient river. So each site actually were located close to the ancient river. Of course, ancient river and branches. So I mean, we have one single river with the branches, of course. But to the, uh, you know, I will come later to the differences between the west, the western part of Uruk and the eastern part of Uruk. So this site is uh, Sasanian and Islamic, uh, uh, from the uh, Sasanian and Islamic period. I mean, you see the, you know, the fortress or the, the castle. That one is from the middle Babylonian period, small size. Huh? That one from the middle Babylon as well, you not know, small size. Uh, we have two sites in this uh, uh, satellite image. We have uh, from the Parthian here and from the middle Babylon. And you see the differences between them. And we have all Babylonian. Uh, in this site, and you can see the ancient river uh, so clear. So we have ancient river, and then we have a site. That one is a Seleucid and Sasanian site. Maybe most of the Sasanian actually were like a rectangular shape or a geometrical shape, but the other site maybe like uh, uh, you know ellipsoid or uh, another shape. Neo Babylonian one, you can see the Neo Babylonian uh, side. A middle Babylonian one, that side. So we have the ancient river, and then we have um, a middle Babylonian site close to the river. That one from Eel Dynasty and the Cadian period. Uh, that one, maybe the site is the uh, one of the uh, large sites in the uh, in the western uh, Uruk part. You know, I can see lots of uh, 
foundations, maybe public buildings, uh, and so on. That one from Eri Dynasty, uh, Old Babylonian and Middle Babylonian uh, period. You see how large this site is. Uh, Parthian and Seleucid, this site from Parthian and Seleucid period, small size site. Uh, that one is uh, from Eri Dynasty. You know it's how small the site is. That one from Middle Babylonian, Old Babylonian and Middle Babylonian uh, occupation period of this uh, site. Old Babylonian and Middle Babylon as well, this site. Our Old Babylonian and Middle Babylonian as well. So you see, I mean, it's uh, repeated and, you know, uh, site and ancient repair everywhere. In this area. That one from Old Babylonian, Middle Babylon, and Neo Babylonian. And Seleucid, you see how many period of occupation there. And we have in the top, I mean, in the north of the site, we have uh, a nearly dynasty uh, site. Yeah, I try to, uh, to compare between the western part of Uruk of the present study and the eastern part of the Adams and other studies. So in the coming slides, I will show you the differences between the eastern part and the western part. So you see Uruk there in the middle of the map. And then to the east, we have the other survey. And to the west, we have uh, we survey. So for example, in early dynast in early dynastic sites, period, let's say, in the early period, we have maybe the same density as you can see to the both sides. So, you know, the same density maybe. I mean, the number of the sites from early dynasty may be similar to the number of sites uh, in the where, where, uh, east part of, of Uruk. Uh, uh, in the Uruk period, the eastern part has lots of sites, while the western part has only three sites. So you see, we have now some differences between the east and the west. Uh, so you see how many sites from Uruk period to the uh, uh, east. But you know, only we have three sites um, from Uruk period in the western part. During the Akkadian period, maybe we have the same density on both sides. Sorry. Uh, I lost the connection. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting for the Wi Fi to back again to my lab. We can still hear you. So. Yeah, but you know, you had me on my uh, mobile on the uh, mobile uh, that, but the Wi-Fi stopped, so I cannot share my slides. Yeah, no problem. We've we've got plenty of time, so. Yeah, I will wait for that. You got a lot of cassite bottles on your survey. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I was. Uh, do you have the slides just to back up? Yeah, da Daniel, can I ask you to do that from your laptop, please? Yeah, sure. So yeah, just remind me which slide we were on. We were on Jaffa. Yeah, maybe the third one. The third one we we did. Uh, um, I mean, yeah, that one we yeah we eight, did. Yeah. Uruk period, and then we have Akkadian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that one. 
So yeah, just let you. me know when you want me to skip slides. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So in uh, this slide, um, the Akkadian and Ur-3 settlement are the same density on both of sides, as you can see. Yeah, the next slide, please. Yeah. So during the old Babylonian settlement, I think we have the same density on both sides, as you can see. Yeah. Uh, the, ne the next slide, please. Yeah. Um, the Kassite site in the western part might be more than the eastern part, as you can see how many red dots and how many you know blue dots. So in the western part, we have lots of uh, Kassite uh, sites. Yeah. Uh, the next slide, please. Yeah, the new Babylonian site are in the same density. You see the both sides, we have the same density of New Babylonian period. The next slide, please. Yeah, the same case in with with the Achaemenid sites. They are both in the same density. Yeah. The next slide, please. Yeah, Parthian and Sasanian, we have the same. You know, the density might be less, but I think we have the same density on both sides of. Uh, oh, yeah, the next slide, please. Yeah, early Islamic, you know, I think we have only two sites in the Western part and little site in the Eastern part. So I will say maybe the same uh, density. The next slide, please. Yeah, uh, in terms of conclusion, actually, uh, as you, uh, so in the slides, uh, the western part of Uruk is similar to the eastern part in terms of settlement patterns and period of occupations. So this means that there was no natural or political boundaries between them. Maybe there's no, you know, I suggest in another paper, I suggest there is marshes between them, but marshes is not uh, a barrier. So there is no um, differences between eastern part and uh, western part of Uru. Uh, the second conclusion is that uh, the western part, in the western part, I mean, there was uh, one river feeding the settlement, continued uh, running in the same place for more than 4,000 years. But in the eastern part, we have several courses of rivers. We have evolution, the river changing their course. Uh, people dug lots of canals uh, in the eastern part. Yeah. So yeah, the last slide. Yeah, it's a thank you slide. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm really sorry for the, you know, the, the low internet connection on my side. And I'm happy for any question. Thank you so much, uh, 